doing. Today's video is just gonna be a quick sort of channel update as well as a preview of some of the stuff that I'm gonna be reviewing in the coming months. So first things first, the channel is approaching 1,000 subscribers and actually 500,000 views, which is pretty cool. So if you're watching this, if you've watched my videos before but haven't subscribed yet, please click the subscribe button and the notification bell. The other thing as far as channel update, I just wanted to briefly mention that I have added playlists to this channel. It's not super recent, but I don't think I announced it. So there's playlists for things like guitar reviews, gear reviews, pick reviews, original music, jam sessions, all separated. Just in jam sessions, I think there's over four hours of video. If you wanted to watch them, it will just play straight down. So if you're visiting the channel, check those out as well. But now let's get into some of the upcoming gear. This is gonna be mostly picks. I have one set of strings and a whole bunch of different picks. I've started the pick review sort of series back up again, if you haven't noticed. Basically, I think it's something that's very accessible, obviously, most, most picks are not very expensive. And also I think it's largely overlooked. I think a lot of players look at their pick last as far as what is contributing to their sound when I mean, maybe that's fair, but it's also fair to say that a pick has a huge impact in the sound of your guitar. The volume of it, the tone of it, the attack sound on the strings. I've talked about this before, but again, that's kind of why I'm getting back into pick reviews because, well, I have yet to find a pick that has overthrown the pick that I use all the time. It's really interesting to me to try different shapes, materials, and kind of see the reasoning as to why people might have a taste for one pick over another. So basically this is, I don't know, if you want to consider it like a Sweetwater guitar pick haul or something, I don't know. So firstly I have an 8-pack, multi-pack of Dunlop Flow picks. One of these I've already done because I've had it before, which was the 1.5 mil. But this has quite a range of them from thinner to thicker than that, so there's probably going to be seven picks in here that I can try. I'm not sure if I'll do a dedicated video for each one, if it'll be worth it to do that or just to compare some of them, but we'll see. The next one is actually felt ukulele picks. I don't really expect to use these very often. They are extremely thick and felt. Um, they're more rigid feeling than I expected, but I think they'd have very limited use as far as practical use, but I'm interested to see how they react on a guitar. Next we have some Fender picks, which I don't usually play because mostly when you think of Fender picks, you think of the whole celluloid kind of just real basic sort of plasticky tortoiseshell kind of material picks, which is what this is, but these are a three ply tortoiseshell white tortoiseshell with a indented logo for grip. These are a 351 shape, but they're one and a half mil and they're a really pointed tip. So I thought this might actually be a Fender pick that I have a hope of getting along with. Next up, we have the Dunlop Max Grip Carbon Fiber Jazz 3. These are not XL, these are just normal Jazz 3s, which means they're very small, but they're made of carbon fiber. So I've never in my life played a carbon fiber pick. Normally carbon fiber is used for things that should be lightweight, so be used in like racing or like in a, you know, to lighten up a, a vehicle or something. I don't really know what tonal characteristic it will have. I can't even guess, so that'll be interesting. The next thing we have is two different types of Graftech Tusk picks. And Graftech Tusk, if you're watching this, if you're a guitarist, you'll probably know that that is a nut material. So Graftech Tusk is usually made into guitar nuts I'm actually a fan of Graftech nuts, so this will be really interesting to try. There's two different variations here. They're both 1.4 mil. They call it a teardrop shape. It is basically a teardrop shape. Um, similar size to a Jazz 3, maybe a little bigger, but definitely not as big as a standard shape. They have two variations here, which I got. Uh, they have more than that, but there's two that I got to compare. There's bright here and warm. So not only can I try the material, but I can compare the two. Last up for the picks, we have the John Petrucci Signature Flow Pick, which is a two millimeter flow pick. It doesn't appear to have a raised grip, although it does have insignias on it. And on the other side, has like the John Petrucci Signature. Maybe there's some kind of grip on this. There's like a round area to it, so I'm not really sure, but. John Petrucci, of course, of Dream Theater. Now, 
I'll tell you right off the bat, I'm not the biggest Dream Theater John Petrucci aficionado that there is, but I do appreciate his playing, and I can tell from even from his guitar designs and everything that he is extremely focused on a certain type of ergonomics, which is why I think it's interesting to try his signature pick. And then the final piece of gear that I got in this round of just sort of small gear is actually strings, which is the Diodario XT 10 to 46, which I think is a coded string, although they beat around the bush and they don't say it. They say that these strings combine high carbon steel cores with an extended lifespan treatment, which to me sounds like it's coded. Um, I understand why they wouldn't want to say that because every coded string, sorry, there's a fly. Every coded string that I've ever used before has sucked because it feels like the string is completely wrapped up and you can't really feel it. They don't necessarily sound terrible. They sound kind of like if you just soaked a string with string lubricant or something but they stay sounding like that. But I've never gotten along with the feel. So hopefully, fingers crossed, I can get along with the feel of these. I don't really, I have about a 50% expectation of liking it. 50% is because I have never liked coated string before and 50% is because I have always liked the Dario strings. So I'm hoping I don't get disappointed by these. I'll probably do this video fairly soon because I want to get these on my guitar just to give them at least a first impression sort of a test run, see how they sound, see how they feel. Um, I haven't really changed strings in a while. Lately I've just been using the most basic Dunlop Performance Plus 10 to 46, whatever, because they're the cheapest strings that still perform decently. And that's because you're sick of hearing this if you've watched my videos before, but I have really like corrosive hands, so my strings rust out really fast. I basically get four or five hours of playing time if I'm lucky. Sometimes just two sessions, which could be four hours, but, and then I have to change strings typically, so that's why I'm willing to try these. If they feel coated, I'm not gonna ever use them again, uh, but that's about it. So stay tuned. So there you go. I hope you guys like this little sort of preview channel update video, sort of little sit down. No playing in it, sorry, but it's also worth saying that I have a really cool guitar that you guys have not seen yet. I actually traded my Flying V for it, which I just got a couple months ago, and then I traded it after I had it for like a month so that I could buy this other guitar, which you're gonna see shortly as well. But yeah, if you like this video, don't forget to share it and subscribe. If any of these picks seemed interesting and you're not subscribed, go ahead and do that because I'm gonna be reviewing them pretty soon. Also, if you have any preferences for which ones you want me to do first, leave that in the comments. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out the playlist if you haven't already, and I will see you guys next time.